good morning. I'm coming at you in my car yet again today. Um, I just dropped my dogs off at the groomer and I'm heading home and I really want to do this live event today, but I literally have this 15 minute window to do it. Um, I've got a couple people staying at my house. They also have dogs. So last night was really exciting. We had a four dog pack in the house. Um, one dog is a puppy. She's only like nine months old. So I don't know if you know about puppies, but they are not exciting to be that um, um, around other dogs or my dogs who are old don't really like puppies. And um, then we have another puppy. My daughter's boyfriend's dog is staying with us for a week while they are out of town. And he is a wonderful, sweet dog, but he has never been around other dogs. And so he has some anxiety around them. So that was a really exciting night last night. So I'm like, I have 15 minutes as I drive home from the groomer. Um, and Linda, I should have done it before I dropped him off. I just dropped him off. So the doggos are at the groomer um, getting all cleaned up. So, but somebody asked last week during one of my live uh, things that I did, we're talking about Readers Take Denver, why I have pen names. And I thought, I know I've talked about this before, but it's been a long time and we always have new people in the group. So my real name is Elena Johnson and I started publishing under that name in 2011. I sold a young adult dystopian novel to Simon & Schuster. So that was, if you've seen like science fiction movies like The Hunger Games or Divergent, those are the big ones that were made into movies. Um, those are young adult dystopian novels. I wrote a book like that and Simon and Schuster published the trilogy in 2011, 12 and 13. So I sold that book in 2009 and I was kind of writing this young adult genre for younger readers, teenagers, science fiction and fantasy. I won the Kindle Scout program um, with a fantasy novel and I sold some other things to some small publishers that I've gotten the rights back for. Um, all of my books had romance in them and I was in a critique group and I thought I kind of want to write just a romance, not a science fiction novel that has like a romance subplot in it or anything like that. And so I did, I set out to write this romance with the help of my critique group and I took a lot of classes and as I was sitting down to think, well, I need a hero for my romance. Like when you sit down to watch a Hallmark movie, I don't know if you're like me and my husband, but... When we do that, we know within the first five or 10 minutes if we're gonna like the movie based on if we like the man and the woman in the movie. And for me, it's generally the man because I want to cheer for the hero. And I want to imagine myself to be with the hero by the end. So as I was thinking about it, I thought, well, what kind of heroes do I think are really heroic and amazing? And I landed on cowboys because I love cowboys. And so um, I decided to write this cowboy romance novel. And Harlequin is a big romance publisher. They were running a contest called you, So You Think You Can Write. And I'd only been traditionally published um, through Simon & Schuster, um, through some a couple of other places, like I said. And I thought, well, I'm going to enter this contest with my cowboy romance. And it was for their love-inspired line, which is their Christian line. And I had already written some faith elements into my books because to me, cowboys love the land, the dogs and horses, their mama and God. And I thought, I've already got some of this. I can add a little bit more to meet their requirements. And I entered the contest and I had not been doing super amazing in my writing life. Things weren't going very well, but I made it pretty far in that contest. I made it all the way to the semifinals and it kind of gave me my confidence back and that um, book became my first Liz Isaacson book. The reason I chose Liz Isaacson instead of Elena Johnson is because Christian cowboy romance is completely different than young adult dystopian romance or science fiction or the fantasy novels that I was writing under Elena Johnson. And I didn't want those two kind of brands, this Christian brand and my dystopian brand to, to intermix. I wanted them to be different. So I came up with the name Liz Isaacson, which is a combination of my two children's names. I have a son named Isaac and a daughter named Eliza. And that's where Liz Isaacson came from. <clears throat> she was born in 2015. Her first book is Second Chance Ranch. 
all of Liz's books with the exception of one, which I don't know why I did this. I mean, I do at the time, but all of her books are Christian cowboy romances. I do have one book under her name that I wrote for Hallmark called A Dash of Love, and it's not my own book. It is a movie novelization, which means they gave me one of their movies and I wrote a book to go with it. It does have an, uh, an original prologue, uh, sorry, epilogue at the end that is of my own creation. Everything else is just, you watch A Dash of Love and Liz Isaacson wrote the book to go with it. Um, I should have put Elena's name on that, but at the time, Elena didn't have any romances. She only had science fiction and fantasy. So in 2018, so Liz starts publishing 2015, 2016, 2017. In 2018, Elena decided to pull down all of her speculative fiction, all the science fiction, all the fantasy um, that I had the rights to. I've sold rights to quite a few books and write clean beach romance. So I love beaches. I love brides. I love bad boys. I combined them all together into these beach romances. Um, and I put those under Liz, uh, sorry, under Elena because Liz was for Christian cowboys and the beach romances with paramedics and billionaires <clears throat> and firefighters and handymen, they were not Christian cowboys. And so I kept them separate. In 2020, I wanted to write some women's fiction. I had started a women's fiction novel a couple of years prior to that. And it was kind of depressing and I didn't super love it. And I wasn't, it wasn't going very well and I kind of abandoned it mid book, which I've done several times. It's not like it's the first time, but as women's fiction grew in popularity in 2020, I went back to that book that I had started. I dusted it off. I edited it. I deleted half of it and I rewrote it. And I thought, well, this isn't a clean beach romance. This isn't a Christian cowboy romance. This is women's fiction, which is a separate genre entirely. It does have some romance subplots in it, the way that my dystopian books did, but I thought I need another name for this. So I created Jesse Newton, and that name comes from my sister and my small farming hometown where we grew up. So my sister's name is Jessica, so I did Jesse, and we grew up in a small cow town called Newton. We say it Newton, it's like an un at the end, no T involved in the small Utah town where I grew up and my mom and dad still lived at the time. Um, my dad has since passed away and my mom has moved, but we grew up in Newton and my mom and dad lived there for 50 years. So I made Jessie Newton is my women's fiction name. She writes romantic women's fiction um, and friendship fiction. She's got a couple of series. Her main series is Five Island Cove. So if you've come to feel good fiction from Five Island Cove, it's still me, it's, it's just under a different name. And then in 2021, there was an explosion of rom-coms. Now, rom-coms have always been a thing in movies and literature, um, and especially in the spicy romance side of romance. Rom-coms have been around a long time and been really popular. Um, I don't write any of the sex on the page. Mine are just, I really like the sexual tension. I like the first touch. I love that first kiss. It's always life changing, but I don't really get into the bedroom. Um, and so sweet rom-coms or clean rom-coms weren't really a thing. Um, and they kind of came on the scene at the end of 2020. And in 2021, I thought, I wonder if I can write like that. As I was writing YA novels, I wrote in first person present tense and past tense. So almost all my science fiction and fantasy was in first person. All of my romances in women's fiction are in third. So I thought, I wonder if I can still write in first. This is going to be a change for me. You know, I've written 150 books since those YA days. Can I still do this? And it was kind of a challenge um, to myself and I decided to do it. And it was difficult. I, as editing those books, I was like, this is a sentence in third person. Oh my gosh. And then I'd be like, okay, I got them all. I'd send them to another proofer. And she's like, well, this part is in past tense and it should be in present. I was like, oh my heck. So it was quite a challenge for me to get the tense, just the actual writing part of it right. I'd written a lot of romances by then. Um, and I am not a super fan of like slapstick uh, comedy. 
um, or bathroom comedy. I prefer clever jokes, uh, clever humor, something witty. So my books are a little bit off the curve for rom-coms. They're not fall down funny. They're not stepping in poop, but they're heartwarming and they are witty and clever. And so that's how I kind of have been marketing them. So when that book came out in 2021, I needed a new name. Now, this is where I didn't really need a new name. I could have put Elena on those books. They're set on the beach in Charleston. Um, I just decided to do a different name because the cartoon covers were going to be different than my Elena books. They were cartoons. So illustrated covers instead of like a photo cover. And they were written in first person, present tense. And all of my other 50 Elena books were written in third person. And I thought, I just, maybe I should try a different name. Um, and so I did. And so that's where Donna Jeffries came to life. And that is a culmination of my mom's name and my dad's name. My dad had passed away about four months. Well, only three, I guess. No, four, maybe three. Um, before that book came out. And so I, my mom's name is Donna and my dad's name is Jeffrey. And so I created Donna Jeffries for that book. Um, and that name, that rom-com line. And the books in that series, although I only have one series, is called the Southern Roots rom-com series. And I've seen some people come into the group who started with those books. So that's why I have the four names. And really it's because um, I want to protect Liz. That sounds kind of negative, but it's not. Liz is my biggest fan base. So if you came to me from Liz, she has the most books, she has the most series, she has the big robust families. I get a lot of people reading those books and coming into me as Liz Isaacson through Liz Isaacson. And I didn't want to deliver a beach romance to a Liz Isaacson fan who was expecting a Christian cowboy. And I didn't want to deliver a women's fiction novel to a Christian cowboy who was expecting a Christian cowboy. And I didn't want to deliver a 30 something plus size rom-com to a Liz Isaacson fan who was expecting a Christian cowboy. Now there is some crossover. I have Liz fans who read all my books. I have Elena fans who come in and read Liz books and Donna books. I have Jesse fans who come in and they typically go read Elena's books. And I'm really happy for that crossover. But I decided to keep all the brands separate simply for branding. When you pick up a Liz Isaacson book, you are going to get a Christian cowboy. When you pick up a Jesse Newton book, you are going to get sweet, heartfelt, angsty women's fiction with lots of friendships. When you pick up an Elena Johnson book, you're going to get a sweet rom uh, beach romance, typically with a cinnamon roll hero, a beta hero, um, a hometown hero, like paramedics, handymen, um, in my latest series, one guy is a marketing manager. Um, another guy is uh, like a rental manager. He re manages rentals on Hilton Head, that kind of thing. And when you pick up a Donna Jeffries book, you're going to get plus size, you know, working together, workplace romances, little bit sassy heroines, and they're written in first person. So there is a little bit of blending across the brands. Um, I just released a book called The Relation Trip. It's a beach romance. It's a standalone. I put Elena's name on it. I could have just as easily put Donna's name on it because it's written in first person, present tense. I didn't write it as a rom-com, but I've had Instagrammers and other uh, book bloggers and stuff call it a rom-com. So. I could have put Donna Jeffries on that book. I put Elena Johnson on it. In my head, it was a beach romance. It wasn't a rom-com. I did write it in first person because as I do market research, all of these travel romances um, that are standalones are written in first person. And I thought, well, if I want to appeal to the unhoneymooners, the layover, uh, people we meet on vacation, I should write my book in first person too. And so I did. So there is a little bit of a blur, especially between Elena and Donna. Um, everybody else is created to write things that I get joy out of writing and want to write, but that are not Christian cowboys. So I really do it to kind of isolate Liz and then also write other things that I really enjoy writing. And so that's why I have the four names. Um, and like I said, I probably could combine some of them 
at least Elena and Donna. And I might at some point just for brand ease. But I really enjoy having the four names when I sit down to write and I'm planning my next book. So I'm writing a Jesse Newton book right now. I'm almost done with The Glass Dolphin. Um, my next book is going to be The Tropical Ticket, which is a beach romance. I love the beach. And I said to my husband, can you take me to the beach so I can write this book? And of course, he's not going to. We're, but we'll probably go to the cabin. And maybe one day I'll get to go to the beach later this year. But I love it. But I love my cowboys every time I come back to them. But it is hard to write a cowboy over and over and over again. I want to write other things. So I have created the different names in order to do that. Also, on the author side of things, every platform, Amazon, Nook, Apple, Kobo, Google Play, they have algorithms. And they will suggest books to you as readers based on the author and what else you read. So I didn't want books being suggested to people who didn't want them simply because they were published under the same name. So that is a big reason why I thought, you know what? I could publish these books under Liz. They all fit under Liz, except she decidedly is a Christian romance author, Christian fiction. The other books have elements of it. I just wrote a scene in my women's fiction novel where she prays. But it's not overt, and the religious journey is not part of the journey. It's like a mention here and there that they might pray, or her pastor said this, or something like that. But in Liz's books, there's often a religious journey as part of either the hero or heroine's life, or both, for them to be together. And so that's kind of an element of Christian fiction that those books have. My other books don't have that. They have mentions of religious things or God or prayer. And so I technically could still fit them all under one brand, which is what I did with Feel Good Fiction. That's why I created Feel Good Fiction is because they are all part of one brand and they all do fit together. And I do believe that if you read one and then read all the others, you will enjoy them. But algorithmically on Amazon or Apple or Nook, when their machines are recommending books to readers, a large part of that is what I put in on my side as who the author is. So if I put Liz Isaacson on there, Amazon is going to send you an email that says new from Liz Isaacson, whether that's a Christian cowboy or not. So I didn't want my beach romances, my women's fiction, my rom-coms going out to people who didn't want them. And so I decided to create a little pocket under each, under my big brand, my big umbrella brand of Feel Good Fiction. I decided to, well, I just created Feel Good Fiction last year, but when I created Feel Good Fiction, it was to create an umbrella for each of my little pockets. So that now we can sit on the grass at the parade or at the 4th of July fireworks and we're all under the same umbrella. But you're not getting recommendations from Apple or Nook to buy the books that, you know, are by Elena when you want books by Donna or to buy Liz's books when you only want Elena books. So I know I noticed this when I publish nonfiction for authors. I have a series called Indie Inspiration. And there's four books in that series to teach other authors how to write and market and publish their books. And I put them under Elena Johnson. That's who I'm known as in the reader community and the author community. And uh, Amazon was recommending my nonfiction books to romance readers. And I was getting bad reviews and angry emails from romance readers. And I was like, this is bad. And so that's why I was like, this is why you have the brands. I, I love Amazon and Apple and all of the retailer partners that I publish with, but I want the right book going to the right person and I don't want people to be upset that they're getting recommendations for books they don't want. So there's that little technical um, business aspect to it as well. So that's why I have the four different names. That's where the names come from. I don't just choose names willy nilly. Some people do and that's totally fine. Some people choose like keywords almost for their names. Um, like smoke or love um, or, you know, even heart is a keyword name, something like that. I chose family names um, and other important names to me that mean something to me because my writing is important to me and it means something to me and I want to feel connected to people as I'm writing. And I think we do that 
from the very beginning with the names that we have. I think names are super important. And when I name people and places and things in my books, they're really important to me. The naming, the nomenclature means something. So that's where my four names come from. Uh, and I'm glad somebody asked that question last year during our live event. Last week during our live event, it gave me another reason to do a live event and see you this morning. I'm home now. I'm going to go face the crazy. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday and an amazing week. And I will see you later.